All right, folks. Well, we're wrapping up one video and moving on to the next. So I just finished the week-long bear hunt with uh, Cody, who won the Forge in the Backcountry Bear Hunt giveaway. So in case you're completely out of the loop, when I launched Forge in the Backcountry, I had a bear hunt giveaway. So every $5 you spent on gear got you one entry to win a bear hunt. Cody was the individual who won that hunt. He's from Missouri, but he lives all over the place. Um, if you're watching this video, that video will have already been posted. So you can go back and watch that if you feel so inclined. Had an absolute blast. That's two bear hunts back to back that have just been insanely fun. And I'm kind of making the same comment I made at the tail end of the other video. I almost forgot to have fun in hunting. And the last two hunts have just reminded me that as badass and as cool and as you know, growth filled is, you know, hardcore backcountry solo hunts can be. There's something to be said for just hanging out with some dudes, you know, running around, trying to kill some shit and just having a good time. And that's what the last hunt, the last two hunts were really about. And Cody had an absolute blast and I couldn't be happier with how things went. So uh, we'll see what's going to come next for Forge in the Backcountry as far as giveaways. I'm pretty sure what I'm going to do, uh, probably have things lined up in the next three to four weeks. But now that we have that bear hunt wrapped up, I'm on my way back up north for kind of a super quick mission. So in one of the last vlogs I posted, uh, I ran up north, set up a bunch of cams and salts and... Um, basically got my whitetail scouting underway. So I'm running back up there, a single day mission. I'm kind of on the fence right now. Originally, I have six licks set up and I was gonna set up five more. And after talking more with Gary, the guy who was guiding us down at Landers, who's a buddy, and thinking about it, I'm gonna go look at the six licks I've already got set up first. Cause if I have even like a decent amount of action on those, I think I'm gonna leave it at six and not set up five more. There's no way I can run any more than three bait sites when it actually comes to whitetail season. So the only reason I'm running all these cams and licks now is to find the best three potential sites. So if I already have six to choose from, by adding five more, I'm just making shit more complicated on myself. And it's my first year running cams up there. So what I was thinking is, stick to the six, go check them, as long as I've got decent action, and then next year, I could add another three or four to kind of increase the amount of data that I've got incoming. So it's about a six hour drive from Landers to where the cams are. I left at six o'clock this morning, burn up there, should be getting in the country roughly where my cams are by noon or one, depending on how much I stop. I've got six or seven hours to run around, check cams, and then spend the night up north, wake up at 6 a.m. again tomorrow, and burn back down to kind of the general location of where I was, where we were doing the hunt with Lander, and then I've got a day and a half to do a solo hunt by myself, kind of tail end of the bear season here in Northern BC. And then I got to rip back down to Vancouver. So I'll keep you guys updated in this film with the cams, kind of what it's like getting access. It'll be interesting to see, did any of my cams get messed with? What kind of you know, animals do I have on film? How did the salts hold up? What did they bring in? What didn't they bring in? Which of my setups worked? Which ones didn't? So I'll try and kind of dive into that and kind of share any of the learnings that I have from this trip in this vlog. So time to just crush some miles and head up north. and she's gone. Um, this was probably the most public spot 
of all the cams that I set up. And I didn't, I didn't lock the cams, um, which was a mistake. But I didn't, I didn't have real high hopes for this one either. I don't even really care about the camera. Just the, like the data. Like, I don't know, if you find a cam, why don't you just check the card and leave the camera? You know what I mean? Like, seems like kind of a douchey thing to do. But, lesson learned. One, I want to try and, you know, like I say, my other ones are in deeper spots, a little more secluded. This was like a little patch of range tenure, kind of sandwiched between um, private lots. And you can drive right to this location with a quad. You only have to open a couple gates. Um, somebody was probably walking by, saw the salt over here, and then started looking around and saw the cam. So, lesson learned. Hike back to the truck and uh, go to my next spot. Hope for a better result than this. So, I'm walking out of here and I actually had a bit of a silver lining kind of thought. So, this is a remote hunt for me in that it's nowhere close to my home. It's a 12 hour drive away. You know, actually more than that. Like 14 hour drive away. So I don't have the ability to like get out to stands every day. Um, so when I do my baiting and when I set my final stands up, I'm gonna have to do it weeks in advance and just leave stuff there. So when I can come back, I can just start hunting. And so it's kind of a good thing when the investment is low. I only popped my head in here. I only set up a bit of salt and a $100 trail cam. Because if it was that easy to find and find, somebody found the salt in the cam, then they're definitely going to find, you know, a bunch of alfalfa and a ground blind. And after that, you know, I've sunk in all that time to developing the spot. And then they find that and then they take it or, you know, whatever. I stand to lose a lot more. So it's almost an interesting theory to like test out sites with these early salts and early cams and see which ones I can get all the way to the fall without having them disturbed. And if that's the case, I likely have a good chance of developing them as a bait site moving forward in the future that won't get found. So maybe I'm just saying that to make myself feel better, but it sounds pretty damn logical. All right, folks, we have success. So I can't remember what order this was that I set up, but it's the second camera I checked today. So camera is still good. Lots of salt over there. This is actually one of my favorite setups. Um, it's kind of an intersection of a bunch of cut lines and there's some amazing elevated stand options with crazy shooting lanes. I got 2,500 pictures on the camera. I've gone through, there's a shitload of deer coming through. I've seen, I seen some antlers in velvet. There was, um, I just went back a few days. So I can't really speak to the quality of animal that's on there yet, but it's getting tons of action. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna swap cards and head back out to the truck. But this is awesome awesome potential site for November, October, November, just send, see when I get back up here to do the actual hunting. But I was a little, I was a little depressed after that first one, but I'm stoked now. This is some great news. All right, so made it to the third cam site. Camera's still here, that's a win. What's even funnier is a dude walked right in here, looked around and walked out like two, three weeks ago. And there's some fresh flagging tape at the beginning of this little cut line that comes in here. Not a super great spot, got some pictures, couple little does, couple little bucks, but like not heavy action like the last spot. I am gonna replace the card and leave it here though, because I'm actually right on the side of a bunch of uh, ag fields. And I'm thinking possibly when winter comes it would push it might push them in here from out there or they might be feeding out there and come and bed in here during the day and they might just be 
because everything's so plentiful right now. They might just be somewhere else in this region. And it doesn't hurt. I mean, the cam set up, the salt's here. It doesn't hurt anything. There's the salt set up right over there. So yeah, refresh the card and head on out to the next one. <laughs> All right, so more lessons learned. Huge amount of activity at this location. However, some of the settings I must have had on the camera were wrong because it ran out of space about three, four weeks ago. So I wouldn't have got to see a lot of the antler growth. And something's up with these cameras because with the settings based on how I had them, it said I could take 12,000 pictures and then the camera is full at 4,000 pictures. However, that's pictures and video. So maybe it doesn't calculate the video space, only accounting for all photographs and the videos are taking much more room. So I'm going to bring down the picture quality a little bit um, and increase the detection delay a little bit. So I got more room on this one, but this is another fantastic spot. This spot lends itself really well to a ground blind. So I feel like I have a really good ground blind spot and a really good tree stand spot. So, so far, really good day. Got two more spots to check and they're kind of on the way on the other side. And there's a bunch of like really dark, ugly clouds kind of rolling in. So I'm gonna try and boot my ass over there before it starts dumping on me. Well, didn't miss the thunderstorm and quad is a wee bit muddy for these last two cams, but we made it and there's a bit of a break. So hopefully I can rip and pick up these next two cams. I got one over here and one down there uh, before much more of this storm rolls in. All right, number five, and she's still alive. Uh, pretty good sign too. I just came over, crested the hill. There's a calf moose standing right here. So pretty eager to see what's on this camera. Moose is not a great sign uh, for whitetail baits because they tend to sit on the bait. They like alfalfa too. Um, but I kind of figured this section was a bit more elky than whitetail anyways. So it'd be great to get some additional info for my elk hunt this September. So let's have a look. <laughs> All right, made it to campsite number six. Everything is in order. Had a really weird error on this one. So it looks like for two weeks after I left, it just kind of snapped a picture and a video every one to two minutes. So I don't know if there was something blowing or I had some of the settings wrong or if it's just a manufacturer defect. The nice thing is there's not a whole lot of sign up here. Like you saw that last cam, like it was just utter destruction where the salt lick was. Whereas this one, I mean, there's, there's nothing. No big trails coming in or out, nothing. So I don't really feel like I missed that much. However, salt's already here, cam's already here. Screw it, might as well leave it set up. I shut off the side sensitivity because it's kind of back in a little corner. And I was thinking maybe the, the branches and the, the little uh, bushes beside it blowing in the wind might be setting it off. So the other thing that was weird though is it only took pictures for two weeks and there was still memory card space left. Still had half a memory card, but it hadn't taken a picture since April 25th. So super weird. Anyways, got it set back up. That's it. Time to bomb down to the truck and race back because we got bear hunting to do. So I'll do a little bit of recap once I go through all the pictures. Um, I, I went through the pictures on that last one and there's a ton of elk. So probably not going to bother baiting that for whitetail because there was a shitload of moose too. Um, 
but definitely adding that to the September elk hunt spot list. All right, I just wanted to throw a quick reminder in the middle of the vlog. If you like what I do and you wanna see more of it, I'm not sponsored. Um, I don't have any companies telling me what to do, what to film, what to say, but that also means I don't have any companies paying me money to do what I do. I am fully kind of fan sponsored. I do everything for you guys and all of the money that I make for the channel and with everything I do comes from you guys, which is why you can be absolutely sure of my loyalty to you because without you guys, I can't do this shit. So if you wanna support what I do, there are two ways to do it and I'm not asking for money for free. Number one, go buy a piece of apparel that forged in the back country. This is an apparel line I started specifically for backcountry hunters and hunters in general that wanted to wear something that wasn't brand logo wear or shitty influencer merch. It's high quality clothing with designs I made myself, forgedinthebackcountry.com. I uh, would greatly appreciate your support. And let me know what else you wanna see. We've got hats, shirts, crew necks, hoodies. I design it all, I make it all, I hand select all the pieces of apparel. If you want something, go over, pick up a piece, and I'd love to hear your feedback. Number two, Mindful Reviews. So this is an online community platform that I built from scratch. There's forums, there's a lot of really good people who are deeply interested in purchasing high quality gear, or even, that's, that's a bad way to say it. You know, I've been trying to think about this for a long time, like what is the point of Mindful Reviews? Because it's not to get people to buy more gear, it's to get people to buy the right gear. You know, I had to buy sleep, three sleeping bags before I found the quilt that worked for me. I had to go through multiple pairs of boots before I found the boots that worked for me. And I'm trying to have a community platform where I can reduce the number of wrong purchases before you get to the right purchase. So you go mindful-reviews.com. You can do monthly, annual, lifetime. Um, I do lots of giveaways. Um, and you can, I'm, I'm fully available on there 24 seven for, for gear feedback, hunt feedback, anything you need. So forgeinthebackcountry.com, mindful-reviews.com. If you want to support the channel, head on over to either of those platforms. I would greatly appreciate the support. <laughs> starting to get a little confusing. This is going to be either the end of one video or the beginning of another. So I drove all the way back down from the piece where I was checking my trail cameras. And I've got two days left, well a day and a half left to solo hunt. So I'm out in the field now. I've got quite a history with this field. I've seen some good bears and I screwed up on a really good bear one time. And part of me thinks I'm just gonna sit here, literally, for the next day and a half. It's like 2.30 in the afternoon right now, and I'm literally just gonna sit here till dark. I'll show you what I'm working with. So lots of country and that's the three or four regular spots that I see bears come out in here are pretty, pretty playable with the bow, but then they can also come down way at the other end and then there's just, there's just no hope. I would even shoot all the way down there. I can't remember how far it is to the far, to the far end, but further than I'm willing to shoot anyways. And I didn't bring a gun either way. Um, so yeah, we'll see how this, how this hunt goes. Um, I'm gonna be pretty picky. I already have a great bayer this year. If I'm able to see a giant and get him within bow range, great. If not, that's fine too. So stay tuned, might have some action.
All right, folks, last day here in paradise. I am in a different field. I set that last one all night and did not see a single living creature. Well, that's not true. I saw a crane and a couple of squirrels, but zero bears. So came to a different field this morning, been here for half an hour, still dead. Ain't seen Jack, give you a quick perusal of where I'm at. So I'm going to give it about another 20 minutes here and then I got another couple places I'm going to go check out. Just didn't want to waste the morning, but the real, the real hunt's going to be this evening. I got a location I've only been to once this year, I think, and I think it's been dead over there. I don't think anybody's hunted it at all. So yeah, put in some more time here and then see what we can go dig up somewhere else if nothing pops out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, last kick of the can. We got one last evening to hunt. Weather's perfect, wind is good. Don't know what else I could ask for. And it doesn't seem to matter the circumstances. The end of a hunt is always a little bittersweet. So I'm gonna put on some upbeat music or some kind of happy podcast to kind of lift my spirits a bit. Going out a little bit somber this evening. So fingers crossed, I'm gonna find a bear and perk up my mood. Finally turned up a bear, but unfortunately not the kind of bear we're looking for. Totally sorta stockable position too. Just like 120, 130 yards off the main line, up this little creek draw. I sat here on the road and watched him for quite some time. Could have put a little stock on him, but yeah, not the bear we're looking for. It's 8.30, got him another hour and a half of daylight. So keep pushing on. Well, just had a bit of a mini stalk. That's the problem with this kind of hunting. Came around a corner, probably a little too fast for bear hunting, but I'm trying to get to a section pretty far away before dark. And uh, there was a decent looking bear right back, right back there, right in the middle of the road. And he was walking away from me, wind checking. And uh, I stopped, I backed up, but I was on a bit of a straight stretch. And just before the truck got out of view, turned around and kind of mini busted me, but he didn't run off the road. I was able to get out of the truck. I was able to get my bow. Then I kind of just peeked my head around the corner and he wasn't looking at me, but he just kind of ambled off the road and into this just nightmare stuff here off to the side. Like he just disappears instantly when he goes into that. So that's why I say semi-stock. Not like I really got a chance. So onwards and upwards, look for another one. All right, well, there's the vlog. A little rip to check some cams and then a kind of last minute solo Hail Mary bear mission. So what I wanted to do was hop on here and give a little update as far as the results of the trail cameras and then tell you what to expect in the kind of coming weeks. Now, I got a ton of pictures, but it was very early in the season. So it's really even hard to tell who's got potential, who's going to be worth keeping, you know, tabs on and all that kind of stuff. Ultimately, the takeaway from the mission was I have two spots that are definitely baitable for whitetail. And I have another spot that's going to be a great elk spot. So I don't need to do any more prospecting. 
Those are the two spots I'm gonna stick with for, for Whitetail. I'm stoked with how that turned out. The Whitetail plan is going great. So hopefully that'll be a fantastic hunt this year. Now, I wasn't able to put my tag on another bear, but to be honest with you, I've got a really good fall spot, a river that I might be able to go drift for an absolute tank. So it was really gonna take something special for me to wanna pull the trigger on another bear this year. And I did find I was able to get some more data and learn that area a little bit better and also adjust my kind of road hunting bear strategy, if that makes any sense. I got some good feedback from some of the tactics that I was using and I can definitely adjust those to be more successful next year. But I feel like like overall had a fantastic bear season way more activity um went on two bear hunts was able to kill two bears so season is starting off great so all in all couldn't be more excited now what's up next so i as i'm releasing this video i just got home from a family vacation i have eight days until i leave for mountain goat so i'm going to try and do another vlog detailing my preparation like that last week what do i do to get ready for a hunt how do i pack what do i do to take care of the family what's my training and nutrition look like and take all of that and put it out into one vlog slash kind of prep video so if you have any questions about my preparation strategies and how i get ready for a hunt drop them in the comments section below and i'll be sure to address those in the next video this season is jam-packed we got mountain goat two weeks later northern bc elk Two weeks after that, Wyoming elk. Then we got Idaho mule deer, Alberta mule deer, um, Alberta whitetail, BC whitetail, and more. Like it's gonna be a crazy season. So there should be lots of content. And what I'm gonna try and do is as always film the hunts, but then I also wanna do vlogs in between the hunts to show you, you know, how I get ready in between. You know, when you only got a week and a half between two big hunts, what's that look like? getting home, getting all the gear ready, unpacking, cleaning, repacking, how do I manage my food, training, nutrition, all that kind of stuff. So any questions, let me know in the comments section below. If you could take a moment and engage with this content in any way, shape or form, like, comment, share, subscribe, I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, thank you for tuning in.